I had once more gone through time to experience history as it was being made. I had seen, through the eyes of an eyewitness, one of the most horrendous events in our recent time. Was Katie really there? Did she actually live the life of the Japanese man that she described in such astonishing detail? It appears to be so, when you remember the trauma she felt as the original memory was triggered and brought to the surface, and the extreme relief and happiness when it was over. Where else could these memories have come from? Surely not from her conscious mind, and certainly not from mine. If a modern young girl were going to fantasize and invent a past life, it would be logical to assume she would pick one about romance and excitement, not one about such absolute horror. Those who don't believe in reincarnation will have other explanations for this strange phenomenon. But does it really matter? The important thing is that it helped Katie. She has grown much from the experience. It's also important that we are at last able to see the war from a different viewpoint. Of course, this was the view of one individual living at that time. Others may have had different opinions. I was alive during that war, and, as a child growing up then, I know my remembrances are different from an adult's or someone who fought in the war. Does this make it any less true? We all see things from within our own reality. Our propaganda at the time had convinced us that Japanese were terrible monsters without souls. They were the enemy, and at that time, we were so conditioned we would not have even considered that the everyday people in that country could be any different from us, confused and frightened. We thought they were monsters, and they thought we were monsters, but in reality, no one was a monster. And yet everyone was. Nogori Gatu gives us a poignant story of the helplessness of the average Japanese caught up in a war situation they didn't want or understand. Like people everywhere, they only wanted their lives to continue as they had in the past. The military elements of the government were the ones that wanted power and influence in the world. This story points up the very real fact that governments, not people, make wars. The innocent are the ones that suffer the most, losing their homes and their families in the insanity that prevails. They are often the pawns of the powerful, but if left up to the individual, there would be no wars. I believe from this story that these are the feelings of the average person anywhere in the world. There are still those who say that since Japan started the war, through their bombing of Pearl Harbor, they deserved anything that happened to them. But who are they? Through this regression, they are stripped of their cloak of invisibility. They become human beings, people. They are Nogori Gatu, his wife, his sons, and their grandchildren. Herein lies the injustice of war. Since time began, I thought long and hard about writing this book. If few others had wanted to investigate the bomb, did I really want to open that can of worms? Did I really want to hold up a mirror and make man take a long, hard look at himself? Maybe it would be better to let the sleeping giant be. But maybe this is the reason behind this story to open that can. Through this unusual approach, and place it on our doorstep to take a look inside and make sure it will never happen again. The controversy will undoubtedly continue down through history as to whether we did the right thing or not, whether we took all the factors into consideration. The entire issue is very complex. After five years of fighting all over the world, we wanted the war to be over. And our men returned home to try to reassemble their war torn lives. We could not sympathize with the enemy. Enemies must be clearly defined in order for people to fight a war and kill each other. War could not exist any other way. They must be anonymous villains or heartless monsters. If you come to know the man as a person, you cannot fight him.